three years ago, back in March, 2020, I did this exact video of how much it really costs to own a horse with very detailed pricing. So like I said, it's been three years now. We're in 2023. So many things have changed since I did that video. We went through a pandemic for a couple years. The economy has changed. Prices have gone up, especially in horse world. So a lot of things have changed. Some things have stayed the same, but it's time to talk about how different the prices are now today in 2023 versus how they were three years ago in the beginning of 2020. So we are going to be referencing pretty much everything that I've talked about in that video and comparing it to today's prices. So the first topic that we're gonna be talking about is buying the horse, because of course you need to know how much it costs to buy a horse because you don't need to know the cost of anything else unless you have plans to buy a horse. In general, it's always been that you can buy a horse probably for free or you know hundreds of thousands of dollars depending on what you're looking for. In that video, I talked about registered horses versus grade horses. And to get exact definitions on those, basically registered horses, just that they have a proven bloodline. There's paperwork that can describe their bloodline. You can see it all. And then for a grade horse, basically we use that term for a horse that's just not registered. It could be a purebred horse, but it's just not registered. There's no proven bloodline attached to it. So typically you'll pay more for a registered horse just because there's proven bloodline. It's just a thing in horse world that if a horse is registered, you're most likely going to be paying more for the horse. Now, if you have a great horse, that doesn't mean that you're going to be paying a cheap price for a great horse. If it's been proven in its training abilities, whatever discipline it has, there's still a possibility that you can pay just as much for a great horse as you will a registered horse. So those two categories don't really like have a definitive power of this one will cost more than the other, but just rule of thumb, typically if you're buying a registered horse, it will most likely be more expensive than a great horse. So you could probably find a horse for about three to $500 or up to $100,000. That's just kind of how the horse world has always been and will probably always be. So now that you have the horse that you've decided to purchase, you need a place for that horse to stay. So two options here would either be boarding your horse or having your own land to keep your horse at. Now, I don't really know boarding costs anymore. Back then, I was a little bit more up to times with what boarding was because it was only a couple years back that I had boarded my horse. And in our area, it ranged really low to really high depending on the care that you were going to get your horse and that still is true to this day those situations are still there there's pasture board self board and full board and i do think that some offer partial board those are going to be your different price points and also depending on what the facility has to offer so pretty much your pasture board in my area is going to be your cheapest and that typically goes along with self board that means that you don't really have a stall. Sometimes the owner of the facility will feed your horse for you. It just depends the setup that they have. Or you come and you feed your horse on your own. Then there's self board where oftentimes those have stalls, but you'll still be required to pick up your own feed, hay, everything, and feed your horse, turn in, turn out. And then partial in my area, again, all of this is pretty much to my area, what I know and just how I've experienced. So partial board would be you get a stall, they'll feed your horse, they'll turn your horse in and out, make sure it has water but you'll have to provide your own feed and hay and all of the things. And then full board, basically they're doing every single thing. They're mucking your stall. They're turning your horse in and out. You have your own stall. They're picking up the feed, the hay, the shavings, all of those things is completely taken care of. Basically you could go there and you can ride your horse, spend time with your horse and not have to do anything else as far as like the care goes for your horse and your horse will be perfectly fine living every single day. So that's kind of how the tier goes. In my area at that time, it ranged from anywhere from $140 and that was pasture board. It can all the way get into the thousands depending on what the facility has, if there's an arena, how many acres there are, depending on what's going on, if there's a trainer on site, there's so many different elements that can go into the cost of boarding. So if you are a no maintenance type of person, just want to board your horse somewhere and can do it all, it might be more affordable. Now, if you're someone that needs to be a little bit less hands-on, you're gonna be more on the higher end of the price structure as far as boarding goes. Now for my favorite, because obviously that's what I do and it's a luxury though I will say is to have your horses on your own property. And whether that looks like they're just on pasture or if they're in a barn, if you've been following my channel for a while, you'll know that my horses went from my old house to um, stalls and then here they were just on pasture for a while until we built the barn that I'm in and now the barn that they're in is again a luxury but if you're able to do that even that prices has inflated so much so that's something to consider back then acreage was maybe around twenty thirty thousand dollars an acre 
Now we're looking anywhere from 60, 70,000 plus an acre in just even my area. So finding land has become a lot harder. So I find that situation with horse owners has become a lot harder because just getting the land alone is sometimes not even feasible anymore just because of how expensive purchasing land has become. I also think that might have something to do with people wanting to get back to like rural living and living off their land. I've seen an influx of that in the last couple of years of people wanting to homestead, have backyard farms and grow their own food. All of those things have been such a tremendous factor, I believe, in inflating the price of land because it's a much more desirable thing when in the past it always hasn't been as desirable as it is now. So it goes hand in hand with either boarding your horses or even having them at your own land. You're gonna need supplies, which is inevitable. You're gonna need buckets, you're gonna need shavings, you're gonna need pitchforks, you're gonna need things like that. So you need to make sure that you include that in your expenses. Typically it's just a one-off expense in the very beginning when you're growing your collection and it will last you for a while, whether you wanna upgrade and things like that, that obviously will cost but this is more so of an initial cost rather than an ongoing cost. So this is my supply cabinet. I've had horses for over five years now, so my supplies have really accumulated and you don't need all these to begin with, but there are some standard ones that I talked about in my 2020 video with those prices that we're gonna head to Tractor Supply just like we did in that video and we're gonna compare those prices. And comparing these prices does get pretty crazy with how drastically numbers have changed just within the three years so starting in the bucket section back in 2020 the price of the smaller bucket was $5.99 now compared to today it's $7.49 and there's also a bucket over here for $8.99 now moving on to the larger bucket back in 2020 was $11.99 and now today it's $17.99 so a six dollar increase just on a bucket then pitchfork so we have our regular stall fork for $19.99 back in 2020 and now today it's a whopping $26.99 the metal one was $29.99 back in 2020 and now today it is $37.99 now this is kind of odd because the bigger scoop pitchfork in 2020 was $36.99 but at the store today it was showing up $34.99 now shavings back in 2020 they were $5.99 for the fine shavings now today they are $6.79. Same thing for the pellet bedding. They used to be $5.99 and now they are $6.79. Now moving on to hay bags. So this hay bag was $17.99 back in 2020. Now that same exact hay bag today was $19.99. It's not a huge difference, but still a couple dollars. Now hay nets. So we have one for $9.99 and one for $6.99. And now today those same hay nets now instead are $16.99 and $9.99. Isn't it crazy how prices have changed on just those essential supplies? Now, if you wanna think about crazy price increases, it's time that we really talk about one of the most important things of having horses is feeding them because this is an ongoing expense. You can get the horse. It might not be a very often occurring expense if you have them on your own land. Obviously it's a monthly occurrence expense if you are boarding them, but every single day, you are feeding them and that is an every single day expense so we're talking grain back three years ago i talked about hard keepers and easy keepers and that is still true whether you have easy keepers you might not need to feed them as much and if you have hard keepers you might need to be feeding them more so that's something to take into account if you're lucky you'll have an easy keeper and it technically won't cost you as much to feed your horse it's really not far off but technically your horse is not going to require as much feed also, if your horse is not a horse that's constantly under work or things like that, you might not be feeding it as much either. If you have a pasture horse who's just out on pasture, you might not be feeding it as much as a horse that's constantly working or is into a sport and has higher endurance levels. So that's also something to think about. But in general, it's not going to be too far off of the general consensus of what it's going to cost to feed your horse. So for my horses, back three years ago, we were feeding them two different types of feeds. We were trying to figure it all out. Now, today in 2023, we're on one feed. Back in 2020, when I first recorded this video, Blaze was the only horse that we were feeding a different feed to because he's such an easy keeper. And he was on a tractor supply brand that was Jumor Equistages. And back then it was $15.49 for a 50 pound bag. Now it's just about $23 for a 50 pound bag. And that was one of the cheapest feeds that was at tractor supply. I wanted to make note that it was a tractor supply brand. So it wasn't a name brand and it was one of the cheapest at the time and it's now over $20, which is absolutely insane. 
So we don't feed that anymore, but now we feed all of my horses here in Equine Senior, and I have a price back in 2021 that we were paying $23.99. So now that you kind of know some of those prices, we're gonna head to Tractor Supply once again, and we're gonna see what those prices are today. So here we are by the Purina Equine Senior. This is the feed that we use, and today it is $29.49. So back in 2021, the feed was $23.99, and just technically now two short years later, it's $29.49. That is a $5.50 increase over just two years. And it's always increasing. Every time we go to the store, it's up a couple more cents, a couple more cents, a couple more cents. But now buying feed for $30 a bag, that's crazy. When before the top of the line feed, top of the line name brand feed used to be about $30. Now for us, before when it was $23.99 to feed all of my horses, it was about $4.80 a day to feed all of my horses. And now two years later, it's about $5.90 to feed all of my horses in a day even though the increase in price may not seem very drastic but over the year it has increased our feed bill over four hundred dollars so that is in retrospect a lot of money especially when you're taking care of these horses day after day year after year and especially something that is 100 percent inevitable that you always need to purchase is their feed now we all know that feed grain is like the number one thing when it comes to taking care of your horse because your horse needs to eat but to me, the very number one thing is their hay, their forage, because this is a staple in their diet. Now grain is too, but this to me is way, 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 way better and way more important to a horse's diet. Horses need 1.5% to 2% of their body weight in forage, whether that's hay, pasture, alfalfa cubes, alfalfa pellets, things like that. They need 1.5 to 2% of their body weight in forage every single day. So if you have a standard 1,000 pound horse, that's about 15 to 20 pounds of hay forage every single day. Now for us, our horses are on pasture and hay, so they have forage 24 seven. We do not keep our horses stalled 24 seven. They're stalled half the day. They're actually out to pasture more than half the day than they are in their stall. So one of the biggest price increases that we see every single day that we have seen over the last three years is this right here. And what's crazy is that it's the number one resource that horses need to stay alive and it is just skyrocketing day after day. Now I buy in bulk, so I get it for a smidge cheaper. When I did this video back in 2020, I said that a bale of three string alfalfa was $30. Let me just set the tone that this bale of alfalfa right here is $50. And this was at a discount because it was bulk. My local store right now that sells three string alfalfa is at $60 a bale. In three years, we have doubled the price of hay which is just mind blowing because like I said, this is the number one resource for horses. This is the number one thing that keeps them alive. They absolutely need forage. And unfortunately for us here in Florida, our grass is just not nutritious and sustainable to just feed horses unless you're on like hundreds of acres. So let's break it down. Let's go all through the prices of how much hay was back then and how much hay is now. So the only hay that I purchase and that's ever in my barn now is alfalfa. So that's why I know that one off the top of my head. So I have my note right here that compares back into 2020 versus what the prices are now. So the most common hay types in my area are orchard, alfalfa, and timothy, and then blends of them. So ONA, TNA, things like that would be the blends. So a long time ago back then we did feed ONA, so I do have price on that, and we heavily fed TNA. So back then, two string TNA was $12.50, was actually a really affordable hay, and now it's $20. So that was the most affordable hay that was like good horse quality hay besides like Tifton, Coastal, things like that, that um, was the most affordable. It was $12.50. Now it's $20. And that price is for a 50 pound bale, which is a two string bale. What I have here is three string bales, and these are about 100, a little bit over 100 pounds. So we're going to compare those prices now. So, like I said, $60 at my local store. I get a bit of a discount on it because I buy it in bulk. $10 discount, that is a hefty price per bale. When I did purchase, it was $55 at my local feed store, and that was not even a month ago. So within a month, the price has rose $5 a bale, which is insane. And over here at our farm, we go through about a bale, close to a bale a day. So we're about 100 pounds of hay a day. My horses, we could say each weigh 1,000 pounds. So top tier would be 20 pounds a day. There's five horses. That's why we're going through 100 pounds of hay a day. That's why we're going through one bale. So every single day, $50 a day with my hay. If I was buying from my local feed store, 
I'd be at $60 a day in just hay when three years ago it was $30 a day in hay, which felt like a lot and it is a lot, but compared to now it was much better. Now orchard back then was about $30 and now it's $52. So still cheaper than the alfalfa, but not as much. And then the Timothy, I don't know how much Timothy was back then, but I sure know that it was not $60 like it is now for a three string bale. And my last point of reference for pricing on hay back in 2020, I showed you guys a tractor supply price of an alfalfa compressed bale for $19.99. And I'm really glad that I compared these to tractor supply prices because this is a corporately owned store. So we get to track how their prices have gone up rather than a local family owned feed store in my area. So back then it was $19.99 for a bale of compressed alfalfa. Now let's jump back to tractor supply and let's see how much it is today. So as you can see, it's now $27.99 for the same exact compressed bale of alfalfa here at tractor supply. When just three years ago, this was $19.99. So it's taken an $8 hike in the last three years. Definitely not double like the local feed stores, which, you know, those are local mom and pop stores that have to be able to bring in money. It's nothing like these big chain supply stores like tractor supply where they buy so much so they're obviously getting price cut so we've gotten a lot of the fundamentals out of the way as far as a horse goes you got your horse you know where it's going to stay you know how much it costs to feed them and give them hay we know that there's some barn supplies that we need but we can't forget a huge huge expense that goes into owning horses and it's their routine care and their vet visit even though since 2020 prices have changed we definitely have not changed the maintenance that we're doing for our horses and the first being getting their hoofs trimmed now when it comes to your horse's hoof care there are two options which is basically regular hoof trimming on their normal hooves or on the other hand, there is getting your horse's shoes. But nonetheless, both situations need to be handled every four to six weeks by a farrier. And if you don't know what a farrier is, it's basically the person who handles your horse's hoofs, whether they're trimming them, putting your shoes on, general maintenance, helping you with abscesses, things like that. It's gonna be the specialized person in horse world that helps you with your horse's hoof. Just for a horse trimming, it ranges around $30 to $40 depending on your farrier. So I still currently use the same person that I've been using for many, many years, but in my personal experience, mine was $35. Now, three years later, we pay $45. So it has been a $10 increase per horse that's getting their hoofs trimmed. So not a drastic change, but it definitely has increased over the last three years so now for horses that need shoed now this is more of an expense typically in my area for the fronts it's $90 and then for a full set it's about $240 now um I don't have any horses that have shoes but I did ask a friend and she is getting charged about $100 for front shoes and a trimming and my friend told me that it's about $250 for a full set nowadays so I will say the shoeing price hasn't drastically increased another $10 just like the normal hoof trimming so we're seeing about a overall $10 increase in all of the hoof care three years later. The next thing are our horses, shiny pearly teeth, which I don't have a horse here, but I'll show you the donkeys. There you are. <laughs> and that is getting their teeth floated. So horses need their teeth floated. And that's just once a month, luckily, because it is a hefty price. In my video that I talked about this back in 2020, I said, there's two options and those two options are still there. You can find somebody that doesn't use sedation and doesn't use power tools and they just use hand tools. They're just using hand tools. They're grinding at the teeth, getting all those grooves and sharp points out. And that method is about $65 per horse in my area. Now on the higher end is when your horse gets its teeth floated with power tools. This will usually range around $200 my area and up. I found someone recently that is a traveling um, dentist, horse dentist, and it's become a lot more affordable and they use power tools, they use sedation. So for me this year was $100 a horse, which is still hefty if you have a lot of horses. One of the last like general maintenance things I'm gonna talk about is the Coggins because if you're a horse owner, you will need to show proof of a negative Coggins test. And what a Coggins test proves is that you have a negative test basically for a disease called EIA, which is equine infectious anema. In my area, it's $40, it's once a year. This year we got ours and it was $50. So another $10 increase over three years. Back in 2020, I talked about ER vet visits and that has not changed. ER vet visits are gonna happen. If you get a horse, know that that's something that comes with it. It's inevitable. In your lifetime of having horses, you will 
most definitely have an ER vet visit. This pricing is hard for me to range because, you know, you can't plan ER vet visits. Another important part of maintenance care is this little tube right here, and this is dewormer. So this isn't just because your horse has worms and you're trying to deworm it. We use this as preventative so your horse doesn't get worms. It also is used as to get rid of worms if your horse has worms. So this is an important part of maintenance, especially if your horse eats off the ground in a pasture, things like that. That's where they can kind of get things like that or if they're drinking water off of the ground from ponds. So dewormer can be really inexpensive as far as $2 all the way up to a more high-end dewormer at $14. In my personal opinion, I think they all kind of do the same thing because they all have the same active ingredient. Let's wait until we jump back over to tractor supply and I show you how much this little tube right here has increased in price just over three years. This is a six pack we used to get that used to be $17.99, which is now $44.99. This brand used to only be $3.49 and now it's $9.99 and then Equimax only went up a dollar since 2020. Now, one of my favorite things and also a huge essential, some may not think it is because they think you just need to have a place for your horse to be and feed your horse. But to me, this is extremely important and this is a grooming essentials. Now again, like I talked about supplies for your barn, this is just a in the beginning cost. It doesn't need to be an ongoing cost as long as you take care of your brushes. Some of these brushes in here we have had since I first started owning horses. I actually have a mane and tail brush in here. It was one of the first grooming items that I purchased was this brush right here. So everything else that I've gone along the way is just because I wanted to try new things. But even if you go to the dollar store and you get a regular hairbrush, brushes like that, a lot of things in the dollar store can work just as good as at the tax store. But with that being said, I think it's important to go back to Tractor Supply and see how much some of these just essential grooming tools. And back in 2020, I showed you guys just the very essentials like a curry comb, a mane and tail brush, hoof pick, things like that. We want to see how much they've increased because they aren't really that expensive in reference to other things in horse world, but I'm sure that they have also increased in price. So let's jump over to Tractor Supply and get to comparing. This is one of my favorite brushes and it's the Genie Curry Brush. And back in 2020, this brush was $349. Now it's gone up to 419. Now a soft bristle brush here that I used for example, this brush at the time was 799 and now this same exact brush is now 999. Moving on to this face brush, it used to be 499 and now today at the store the same exact face brush went up a dollar to 599. Now we have these hair brushes, so some of the prices are about 249, 499. Now they're $5.99, $2.79, so a little bit of a price increase there. Now hoof picks, they used to be super cheap, $0.99 cents to $1.69. Now they're starting at $1.39 to $2.19. Now going to the cheapest fly spray back in 2020 was $7.99. Now that fly spray is now $9.99. And then a higher end one, they used to be $24.99 back in 2020. Only went up a dollar actually to $25.99. Now, the last thing that we're going to be talking about in today's video, because it is the least important technically, because like I said, in 2020, if you want to own a horse, if you don't want to ride it, if you just want to let it live on your pasture and that's it. And if you can afford everything that I've talked about before this, you would be perfectly fine with owning a horse. Now, if you have higher expectations of owning a horse, which would be riding it, doing some type of sport, anything like that, trail riding, even anything like that, you're going to need some form of fashion tack. So right behind me is all of this tack. And like everything else in horse world, I would assume that tack has raised too. So I have a bunch of prices that we've talked about in the 2020 video, and we're gonna just go over track just by, we're gonna compare those. because It's hard for me to say that, you know, last year that saddle would have been this much, or this year it would have been X amount of dollars just because things change. Starting with the saddle pads at Tractor Supply, back in 2020, they were $37.99 and at $39.99. Now the same inventory, here we are three years later in 2023, but they have jumped about $10 in price to $44.99 and $47.99. Now moving on to the bits at Tractor Supply, they ranged around $29.99 back in 2020. Now same inventory, they are around $37.99. I saw a couple that were more and a couple that were less. Now moving on to the reins, these two pairs of leather split reins, one was $37.99, the other was $42.99. And nowadays, these same exact reins, they now are $44.99 and $49.99. Now, a really weird thing though, these poly roper reins were $27.99 back in 2020, but today on the shelf, they were $15.99. So let me go grab some of these. And now our girths, so back in 2020, they were $27.99. Not a huge increase on these nowadays. 
they were $31.99, but still a bit of an increase. Oh, you guys, well, there you have it. There's some pretty detailed numbers in comparison of what it costs to own a horse in 2023 in contrast to what it was like back in 2020. We've owned horses for about seven years now, so we have seen price increases over the years, but nothing like we have seen in the last three years so drastically, even in just the cost of feed and hay, which is like the number one essential in caring for a horse is feeding them. Owning horses used to be expensive and now it's like really, really expensive. So just something to keep in mind. I always like to keep it real with you guys and set you up for proper expectations on what it is and how much it costs to own a horse. I always try to be a good advocate for horses because there's a ton of horses in this world and oftentimes they can end up in bad places. Just sometimes people get excited about wanting horses and don't understand the gravity of, in the long run, of how expensive that they really can be. So I always want to just be an advocate for the horse and give you guys real numbers, real situations. Obviously, we can't predict or plan anything, but I do think it's helpful that you guys know what the prices are nowadays in 2023 because they are not what they used to be. And I would assume that they're going to continue to grow because like I said, every day they continue to get more and more expensive. So if you guys like today's video, if you guys found it helpful, make sure you go and give this video a big thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed to my channel down below for more videos like this. And of course, I try to answer everything that I possibly could. If I forgot something, let me know in the comments down below and I will try to answer that for you as well. All right, you guys, well, we love you and we will see you in the next one.